Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Bethel this morning. Let's stand and sing together. Welcome to our service on this uh, extra early Daylight Savings Time Sunday. <laughs> uh, we're so happy to be with you this morning, both here in the sanctuary and at home. I see some familiar faces that we haven't seen for a few weeks out in the sanctuary, which is wonderful. Um, we do want to remind you, there's still room. So if you're watching at home and you're a little nervous but you miss church, come on in. There's space. We have socially distant pews. We're wearing masks, and there is room for you in our, in our house. So please join us, and if not, please continue to be with us online. We're glad to have you there as well. Um, just a couple of announcements. Our board meeting, or so to our uh, Bethel board, we have a meeting this Tuesday, um, Tuesday evening, as we usually do. Information on that will be coming out in your email in just a day or so. Um, also, our Bible study is still going strong. We're in the midst of a Lent Bible study with Max Cicado, and it's a, it's a great one called He Chose the Nails, and we're having a good time. And you may have missed a couple weeks, but you, maybe you've been thinking about it. You can still join us. We'll get you caught right up to speed, and um, it's, it's a good study. So um, if you're interested, reach out, put a comment in the comment box there, and we'll make sure we connect in with you. Um, Greg wanted me to uh, announce that we um, are still collecting our J dollars. So for anybody who's not familiar with what that is, some dollar bills have a J in the serial number, and we call those our Jesus dollars. And we collect those, and we um, turn them into a special donation, typically to our friends down in Haiti to support the clean water initiatives. But right now we currently have 58. So if you see a dollar bill come through um, your pocket, check that serial number. And if you can, spare it for our special collection. We'd appreciate that. Um, We've got a big week coming up in just, a, I think, a couple of weeks, maybe two weeks out, um, and that is Holy Week. So um, there are lots of events that we're going to be doing. Um, we'll have our Palm Sunday service to kick off Holy Week. And then on Thursday, April 1st, we will have our Monday Thursday uh, communion service, which will be here in the sanctuary with a uh, safe, socially distanced meal, as we can share it, as well as um, streamed online. Um, we'll have our Good Friday service, as we've done. 
again here in the sanctuary and online that night we will also um, have our good friday prayer vigil which will uh, so dennis will be reaching out about signups for that and getting people to pray so what that is if you're not familiar is we take shifts throughout the whole night and we fill this church with prayer all night long and they're just a couple uh, like two people so it's safe it's distance but you can be in here um, and pray for our church pray for our nation pray for our communities pray for one another and it's a great way to just stay focused on that that waiting time of good friday into what's coming um, on uh, easter morning and so with that on uh, easter sunday our sunrise service will be at kiwanis park on uh, at 7 30 in the morning that will be outside um, and that will not be streamed online. So if you want to enjoy the magic and the wonderful um, experience that is the sunrise service, you got to be there. And then, um, and then our, we'll have our traditional Easter Sunday service at 11 here in the sanctuary. So we hope that you can connect with us and join us to celebrate that Holy Week. And as we praise the Lord and uh, just stand in awe of what he did for us back at Calvary that week. Um, we are still collecting for our America for Christ offering, and so we have a quick video to share um, to show, uh, continue on in, in, our, um, in our message for that. How has Creature Kind benefited from grant funds from the American Baptist Home Mission Societies? In 2020, your generous donations helped us launch our very first fellowship cohort, a group of Christian leaders who are working in the United States, France, and Australia with our local communities engaging other Christians on what it means to consider the welfare of farmed animals in our faith. These fellows are bringing conversations about farmed animals to denominations, organizations, institutions, and unchurched communities. For instance, we launched a podcast series called Let's Dish, where we're talking about the cross sections of food justice, faith, and social change. We also launched a series for preachers at Duke Divinity School called Christology in the Age of Factory Farming, the Lamb of God and Other Creatures, and more. And all of this is because of you. So again, we will be collecting that at the um, end of this month, the last Sunday in March. And uh, so please be considering what you can give to support that um, wonderful mission that we here at Bethel have supported for years. And we thank you for all that you've contributed. Our last announcement this morning is um, a special message. So I'm sure that, uh, Lord, let me get through this without tears. Whew. I am sure that most of you have seen this week that it was a year ago that our lives just turned upside down that uh, they uh, declared a global pandemic, that our schools shut down, our work shut down. And we went into that thinking, okay, a couple of weeks and we'll get back to life as we know it, little blip and whoo, wow, <laughs> if we knew then, right? Um, but God knew, God knew. And uh, we at Bethel, and there are so many that stepped up, you know, that I love that, um, that saying, uh, God doesn't uh, call the equipped, he equips the called. And so many were called and they stepped up. And so we just wanted to take a moment to thank so many of you. Um, I have a few people that I wanna call out. Um, our, our food pantry and our office staff for keeping that going and feeding, you know, serving that call that we have loud and clear from God that he has put on this church of feeding our community. And we, we kept that going and we didn't miss a beat and we stepped up our safety and that was incredible. Um, my friend Gil back there, who hates being recognized, but he made it all but his personal mission to keep this place clean and safe, and we are so thankful for him. Uh, Kara. <laughs> 
Kara White, who misses us greatly and can't be with us, but make sure that our PowerPoints every Sunday that she's able, they look pretty and you can see our words and our lyrics and we can sing and worship together. And um, the deacons, the board, we came together in a way that I don't know if this church ever has, has been that collaborative, but it was wonderful and we shared you know, thoughts and praises and opinions and concerns and we did what we thought God was calling us to do for the, be- the good of his church. And uh, the worship team and uh, my friend Joy just st- and Melissa stepping up to keep us, this is a musical church, which is part of why I love it so much, and uh, to keep us focused musically. And then there are two, two people that uh, took us above and beyond, I think, most of our wildest dreams. And that would be our friends up in the booth, booth uh, Paul Jordan and Vince Bazil. And they, I'd have that, like anyone else, I'd have them come down and stand by me and put them on the spot. They would both probably kill me, and I gotta go home with one of those guys, so don't wanna do that. But um, some of us know, not all of us maybe, they have gone above and beyond to answer God's call to keep our service going in the sanctuary and be able to stream it online and record it. And I mean, we're talking crawling in ceilings, going under rafters, sending cameras in remotely to find what's going on, how we can wire this place, rewiring, running internet lines. I mean, dealing with one crazy blip in technology after another. It's, it's wild how the devil tried to attack the work that we were doing and the work that they were doing. But God is stronger and God is bigger and he brought to Bethel these two guys who could come together. And so as a very special thank you, on behalf of the church, we have a little gift, and I'm unwrapping Vince's, we have a little gift for them. And these are the official two-of-a-kind Bethel Tech Team polos that we had made for our guys. So you'll be able to spot them and see them. So again, we just want to thank you both so much for all that you've done for all of us. You thought you were going to cry. You almost made me cry. (laughs) I did it. (laughs) All right, let's stand and worship the Lord together. Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us.
And all will see how great, how great is our God. Lord God, you are indeed truly, truly great. And we are in awe of you, Lord, in awe of what you've done for us, in awe of what you do for us every day, in awe of the sacrifice of your son. And Lord, we are just so thankful. As we get closer to Holy Week and celebrating the, the wonderful gift that is the resurrection of Christ, Lord, we, we pray that you keep us mindful of, of how great a gift your grace is, Lord, and how it is free and it is there for us and we, we can have it just by loving you and just by bringing you into our hearts, Lord. We are so, so thankful for that. We pray that you would be with us in our worship service today and that all that we offer would bring you glory. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
seated. A reminder during our offertory time, if you're here in the sanctuary, you can drop your tithes and offerings in the plates at the back. If you're joining us um, from home, you can mail in a check, you can donate through your bank, or you can donate online. And uh, we thank you for your contributions to God's work. morning. I hope you're having a wonderful morning. It's a bright sunny day and, <clears throat> and uh, most of us are going to be tired all day long. Boy, when my alarm went off this morning, <sighs> uh, it was hard. But I'm so glad to see your faces here. We're so glad to be celebrating online. If you have a prayer request, uh, please put it in the comments if you're watching online. If this is the first time if you're watching online, please put your name in so we may pray for you and lift you up. How may we pray for each other this morning? Yes. Uh huh. Ah, Val's birthday. We're thankful for Val. All right, we all are. All right, Amy. Her dad is cancer free. That is a praise. Oh. Yes, I'm going to Okay. All right. And then I'm having uh, surgery on Thursday. And you're having surgery on Thursday, so we won't be seeing you for a couple of Sundays. Yes. All right. I don't mean all right. I mean now also bad. But <clears throat> we will lift you up in prayer. I asked prayer for Tom Sutton. Dot Sutton had surgery on his foot. Dot Sun had Tom had surgery on his foot, so we want to pray for him couple of weeks, some, some time, yeah. We're praising God that we have a lot of people getting their COVID shots, so we're, 
we're strategizing for Holy Week. We're hoping you all participate in that. Did I see a hand up back here? We want to pray for Kathy. Yeah, this is at Kelsey. Uh, her cancer is progressing. Kathy's cancer is progressing, so we want to keep her and the whole family in prayer. Yeah, they're going to do experimental work on Wednesday, but hopefully, hopefully the symptoms. So she's going on an experimental drug to help with the symptoms so she can continue the treatment. Is that what it is, or just to help with the symptoms? Help with the symptoms. Okay, so we're going to keep her in a lot of prayer. Yes? Pastor, I do have one that she's handing in a thing, a hand. Uh, she's dealing with cancer. She's dealing with some issues with her leg. You have a friend who's dealing with cancer? Yeah. Okay. So we want to keep her in prayer. That would be nice. All right. With these praises and petitions, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are so thankful for you, the God who hears us, that you are the great physician, that you heal. Lord, we are thankful for those who have been healed. And we praise you for your intervention. We still pray for those that need your healing power. We know that even at this time, you can do something. And we ask you to intervene, to answer our prayers, to baffle the doctors. We ask you to comfort us as we continue to move through this covid We ask you to open us up to the places where we may be able to share your story, share your life, share your son with people that need it. Open our eyes to see where you're working so we might come alongside to do what it is that you would have us do. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. We are continuing our exploration, what it means to be salt and light for this year. Jesus, who is the Messiah, the one who came to die for our sins, the King who will come, the living and the dead, God himself in the flesh. Who is he? We are looking at who he is. If we are to be salt and light, we have to explain to the world who he is, who he is to us, who he is in Scripture. Now, last week, I pointed out that scholars and theologians divide the attributes of God into two categories. Uh, that is, the, the category of greatness. This is how, where God is great, and the category category of goodness. Now, when, G- when God came down as Jesus, he gave up all of his greatness, but none of his goodness. And we looked at some of his greatness last week. Uh, we looked at his infinite qualities, infinite in time, infinite in space. God knew, uh, the God we know cannot be contained into a single place. He cannot be contained into a single moment. He lives all of them at once. And if we were to take all that is He could hold it easily in his hands. He's so much more than what it is we know. And not only did God come down and put all of who he was into the container of flesh that we walk in, but he also took on our pain. He took on our death. In addition to that, God also gave up his power. God gave up his power to come down as one of us. Genesis 17.1, 17.1, we find this title for God in Scripture. When Abram was 99 years old, years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. I am God Almighty, all-powerful. I have all power. I have power beyond which anyone can conceive. Now, we think we know what power is, but we really don't. Many of us believe that we're able to control our own lives and our own destinies and, and everything. We can't. What is power? What is power? The story goes that an admiral in the U.S. Navy was conducting war exercises in the 1930s in the North Atlantic off the coast of Canada. Canada had been warned that these war exercises were going on. The admiral felt that, uh, well, as they were conducting the exercises, they saw on the horizon uh, a light of a ship. And the admiral was surprised. The, Can- the Canadians had been warned, so they managed to get the, to get the people on the other side on, on the con. They were talking to them. The ensign in charge of communication said, I asked him to what I avert his course, and he said that he wouldn't. The admiral grabbed the mic. He yelled into it. We demand that you divert your course 15 degrees north. The Canadian calmly said, we recommend you divert your course 15 degrees to the south to avoid a collision. The admiral was furious, yelled into the mic, I am an admiral of the U.S. Navy. I say again, divert your course. 
I'm a corporal in the Canadian Navy. I say again, you divert your course. The admiral said, this is the aircraft carrier USS Lincoln, second largest ship in the United States Atlantic Fleet. We are accompanied by three destroyers, three cruisers, numerous support vessels. I demand you change your course 15 degrees north. That's one five degrees north. Or countermeasures will be undertaken to ensure the safety of the ship. The Canadian calmly replied, this is a Canadian lighthouse. Your choice. <laughs> time and time again, the most powerful people on earth have been exposed for being weak. They are powerless human beings. We think we have power. But something then shows us up to be just plain human beings. Napoleon died in exile. Hitler died cowering in a bunker. The most powerful people on earth brought up to death, shown for the weak children they really are. We are weak. God is strong. Say that with me. We are weak. God is strong. Even in our most strongest moments, we are still weak. Time and time again, God dis demonstrates his power in the Old Testament. He does it in big ways, like taking the firstborn of all the Egyptians. He does it in small ways, like making the, the head of an axe float. There's nothing that God cannot do. God tells Sarah she will have a child, and she says, Will I have a child when I'm old? And God says, Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Psalm 2, the nations conspire against God. God's response to this rebellion, he laughs. You aspire to rebel against me? We cannot force the light to shine. God does that. All that we have, all that we have, all that we are comes from his power alone. God knows no fear. He can make the night day and the day night. He can stop the world from spinning and set it on its way as if it had never been stopped. He can stop the rain. He can change the stones to bread. He strikes down kings and he raises up widows' sons. Beginning in 2 Kings 18, we find Hezekiah, king of Judah in Jerusalem, surrounded by uncountable armies of the king of Assyria, Sennacherib. Heck, Hezekiah tries to bribe him with all the gold that he has in the city. They strip the walls of the temple. They take the hinges out of the doors to the temple and in the throne room. And they send everything they have to Sennacherib. Sennacherib's response, 2 Kings 18, verse 29. Thus says the king, that is Sennacherib. Sennacherib says, do not let Hezekiah deceive you. For he will not be able to deliver you from my hand. Nor let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for thus says the king of Assyria, Make your peace with me, and come out to me, and eat each of his own vine, and each of his own fig tree, and drink each of the waters of his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own, a land of grain. A new wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive trees and honey, that you may live and not die. But do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any one of the gods of the nations delivered his hand from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvium? Uh, Hena and Iva, have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of the lands have delivered their land from my hand? That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem from my hand. About 200,000 people, soldiers, camped around the city of Jerusalem when Sennacherib made this declaration. That night, 185,000 died in their sleep. Jerusalem did not fall because no one can stand up to the power of God. He doesn't need our help. To have all that power, the ability to do whatever you want, when you want, how you want, 
whenever you want. And I mean whenever. I mean, God can do something in 800 B.C. and something today, and he can do both at the same time from his perspective because he experiences all of that at the same time, and he's all that powerful. God gave up all that power to come down as one of us. Is there a limit to God's power? Is there a limit to God's power? Kinda. There are, are rules to God's power. God cannot do something against his own nature. God cannot do something unloving because he is love. Everything he does is love. God cannot create contradictions. He can't, he can't create, uh, uh, he can't make square triangles, right? He can't change past events. God cannot break a promise. God is consistent, not arbitrary. These kinds of things are out of his power. Oddly, though, they make him more powerful. God is consistent, and that gives him more power rather than less power. When we make a promise, we break it because we can't keep it. If we were honorable people, we would try to keep it, but often, sometimes we make promises that we don't keep. I'm sure uh, my children could give a long list of all the promises that I've broken to them. That can never happen to God. All of this power, all of this freedom, and God chooses to come down as one of us. Was Jesus powerful? The old hymn goes, Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon the little child. Pity my simplicity, suffer me to come to thee. Now, pardon me for contradicting, uh, contradicting a Methodist who wrote this. Uh, this is not Jesus. Jesus, as a child when he was 12, was teaching the teachers in the synagogue about who God was. He called out the rich. He said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle for it than for any of you to get into heaven. He said, who is ang who is anyone who's angry with his brother is guilty of murder. Jesus overturned the money changer tables in the temple not once, but twice and maybe more. He called the Pharisees Satan's spawn, brood of vipers. There was power in the man. He showed he was a powerful man. A powerful person. Some of you might say, Jesus was all powerful. God in the flesh. How could he not be all powerful? But Jesus put off his power to become one of us. Now, wait a minute, pa Pastor Paul. Doesn't Jesus demonstrate his godlike power in his lifetime? I mean, doesn't he calm the storm? Doesn't he heal the blind man? Doesn't he raise the dead? Jesus gave great signs. He did wondrous things, but through the power of God the Father, not through his own power. Not as a man, he didn't demonstrate that power. He had God's power move through him. Am I splitting hairs? No. Jesus lived exactly as we live. He didn't take into himself any extra power because he was God. He didn't take into that. He put off that power completely, yet he did these miracles. Jesus did these miracles, and he tells us we can do them too. The same things that Jesus did when he walked, we can do. John 14, 12, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Jesus has gone to the Father. He says, you and I can do the same works that he did. We read about it in the Bible. John and Peter healed a lame man. Paul raised a dead person. They all share the gospel in impossible circumstances. The power that Jesus showed while on earth was done because God the Father was working through him, through his body, through his mind, through his self, through his frailty, and he can do the same through us. Through the power of God, Jesus could have turned stones to bread. Through the power of God, Jesus could have called down legions of angels to take over all the governments of the earth. But he chose not to use that power. 
He walked as one of us to be weak, as we are weak. Now, if we put off ourselves, if we put off our wants and desires and walk as Jesus walked, with God as Jesus walked with God, put God first as Jesus put God first, we would find we have the same power moving through us. Jesus promises that the power of God is displayed through him. And he promises that if we follow him, God's power will be displayed through us. Now, here's the limitation. We can only do those things that God wants us to do. We can only do those things that God wants us to do. Jesus lived in that limitation. God's power is available to us if we do God's will. God's power is available to us. God, it was God's will for Jesus to walk the earth in weakness, not power. It was God's will for Jesus to be a suffering servant, not a lordly king. It was God's will for Jesus to die on the cross for the sins of the world, not enforce a righteousness on humanity that would destroy humanity. God's will for Jesus to sacrifice himself to save the world. If it's God's will for Jesus to do those things, who really had the power to do anything, what do you think his will is for us? To display power? To oppress the weak? To enforce all the rules? Or to be weak? To suffer? To die? To save? We can have that power, but to have it, we have to put ourselves aside. Jesus had that power. But how did he live it out? But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the good news is you can have all the power of God at your fingertips, but you have to lose yourself to get it. And if you lose yourself and put God first and others second, you won't need that power anymore. And in that place, with our weaknesses, the real miracles of life can happen. They can be displayed through you and they can be displayed through me. In our weaknesses, God's power is displayed, but not through armies or violence or death. God's power is displayed through changed lives. I'm a firm believer that people don't change unless God intervenes. The miracle of a changed life is bigger than changing the weather. The miracle of a changed life is bigger than healing the blind. The miracle of a changed life is more lasting than raising the dead. Jesus came as the Messiah in a large part because he didn't display the power. Wait, he, Jesus was rejected as the Messiah because he didn't display the power people thought the Messiah should display. They rejected him. Yet he did everything that God promised the Messiah would do. He raised the lame, he healed the blind, he called for the dead. But that's not what the leaders wanted. They wanted a Napoleon, not a Christ. A Caesar, not a servant. But Caesars never change lives, they only take them. Caesars never find the lost. They only reward the found. Caesars never put others first, they only think of themselves. The history is full of Caesars, but there's only one Jesus. April 6, 1994. Marked the beginning of a dark and infamous days for Rwanda, a small country in Central Africa. For the next hundred days, 800,000 Tutsis were killed by the Hutu militia, mostly using clubs and machetes. A genocide of monumental proportions and the rest of the world looked on with silence. A young Christian named Benyani lived in a world of hate. His name meant little bird because he was so musical. That's why they called him that. He graduated with honors. He became a school principal. But educated people were suspect during this time. They were routinely executed in Rwanda. Sometimes wearing a tie could get you killed. 
Benyani was at school with 11 of his friends who were all teachers. And one day, a group of soldiers came and took Benyani and the teachers out of the school. They stood together. Benyani asked the soldiers if he could pray for them. He prayed for his friends. He prayed for their families. But he spent most of the time praying for the soldiers. Benyani's friends were encouraged. They were expecting maybe there might be a change of heart in the soldiers with this display of grace and mercy. They continued their march outside of town. And when they stopped, Benyani asked the soldiers if he could sing for them. And he began to sing, Out of my bondage, sorrow and night, Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come. Into thy freedom, gladness and light. Jesus, I come to thee. All the people with him began to sing with him. When the last note was sung, the soldiers raised their rifles and shot them all to death. These soldiers then went out and got as drunk as they could, except one. One soldier sought out an old Quaker missionary that he had met. He asked her, what kind of God do you serve? Who could give that kind of life? to those who follow him. That night, she led this soldier to Christ. Soon, he was telling anybody he could about his Savior, about his life, about his changed heart. He started to talk about Jesus. He started Bible studies. And it wasn't long until they shot him as well. If I tell you the world strikes us down, do you believe he will raise us up? God's power is displayed in our weaknesses, not our strength. He calls us to follow in Jesus' footsteps, not Caesar's. Changing the world doesn't require a vote. It requires all of us to give all of what we are. To be the light and the salt, no matter what the cost. And we know that God loves us. And that whatever happens to us, we are in his hands. And that wherever we go, he is guiding us. That whoever we touch, God is touching them. That his word doesn't come back void. And that when we do something in the power of the Holy Spirit... The world is changed. We are called to be the salt and the light. Let us answer the call and follow him as best we can with all of what we are. I'd like to invite the singers to come forward as we sing our last song, Blessed Assurance. But as they come forward, would you bow your heads and pray with me? Lord, there are so, much, so, many, so many times I have held back part of who I am. I ask you, Lord, to help me. Help me to give more of myself. Help me to follow you better. Help me to listen to your voice. To feel your spirit move through my heart. Help me to love others better. Help me to love the unlovable. Help me to find those who have never heard your voice. And share with, your, with them your grace and your mercy. Help us change the world. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Sure.
Now may the Lord of miracles give you an opportunity to share God's power, to share God's grace, and share God's love with someone who needs it. We pray all these things in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 